I, uh, in addition to thanking the organizers for keeping up uh, with the activities and giving us the opportunity to be together, uh, at least, uh, as I said, in this way, uh, I also wanted to say a couple of uh, words, uh, going backwards to my, actually many memories of my visits in Novi Sad along the years. I uh, really think that uh, Professor Takachi was one of the first, actually, I, I met at the institutes uh, almost every time I was there, together with all the others, and I will certainly miss him uh, very much uh, in the future. So this uh, talk, as all the others that uh, were given advance, is dedicated to his kind memory. So what I'm going to uh, talk about uh, today is uh, something that, uh, unfortunately, probably many or some of you had uh, the opportunity to listen, at least partly in other occasions. Uh, this is actually joint work with uh, my former PhD student, uh, Ahmed Abdeljawad, who's now moved uh, to University of Linz, and my brother friend, uh, Joachim Toff from Vecro, who I seen uh, connected uh, in, the, in the group. So greetings everybody from Turing, and let me just uh, start uh, with the, the plan of uh, my talk, which is the following. So I will just uh, spend, uh, unfortunately, some time in uh, just motivate uh, what we are doing here and also to introduce a lot of uh, uh, notation that will be needed in the SQL, uh, illustrate some uh, previous uh, so-called lifting results, so what these are and uh, why we found them interesting to study, and then illustrate uh, our actual uh, Lifting results, so how we contributed to this uh, to this uh, topic, and then if time allows, uh, if we have still have some some uh, time left, maybe I will give you some uh, more details about the proof in addition to those that I have planned to illustrate during the talk. So this is just a very localized and short uh, list of uh, references that were somehow motivation and uh, starting point for us to uh, get uh, into this uh, topic. Uh, um, so these are uh, previous results by uh, Borgiato Cordero and Grekenik, Grekenik and Toft in 2011 and 2013, and in red, uh, the paper that we brought together that uh, just recently appeared, actually uh, it appeared online first uh, past year, but now is officially <laughs> 2020. Of course, there would be a lot more to to mention here, this by no means uh, exhaustive, but those are just uh, the specific papers that were somehow for us inspiration and then a basis for what we did. So what are liftings? Okay, here uh, we say that uh, two spaces uh, perform a lifting properties if there are convenient, in a sense that I will try to explain later, maps, which uh, bijectively send uh, V1 to V2. Then in that case, uh, the map is said to lift uh, V1 into V2. And the idea is the following. So if you want to study mapping, properties of a certain mapping, say phi, and you have good lifting, say, of uh, V1 and W1, respectively, to V2 and W2, maybe for some uh, good uh, reason, for some good calculus, uh, you can reduce the problem of studying properties of uh, phi to study properties of uh, phi tilde obtained in that way, composition in that way under this uh, commutative diagram. And if you are, say, lucky or <laughs> somehow uh, clever, whatever you want to <laughs> prefer in this sense, then maybe you can actually, actually uh, obtain results uh, on big phi studying uh, the, the composition phi tilde, hoping that, uh, for instance, everything involved there lies in a, in a good calculus and maybe you reduce uh, orders of symbols or get better properties for phi tilde than going directly directly to study phi. And that's essentially the, the motivating ideas. So uh, studying properties of certain maps, obtaining them, actually studying properties of maps between more convenient or say easier, or better known spaces. Then, basic samples of these are very, very easy. So consider, for instance, the weighted LP space. 
So this multiplicative map, I mean, that is the standard notation for the uh, so called Japanese brackets, so the standard uh, weight there. So this actually lifts uh, the weight space LPS into the weight space LPS minus L0. Similarly, if you take uh, the Sobolev space modeled on, on uh, LP, so HP sigma here, you have a, a dual mapping to the one that I just uh, considered, the multiplicative one with this uh, <coughs> multiplier mapping. And actually, this again is a lift, lift AP sigma to HP sigma minus sigma zero, just losing order in the Sobolev regularity, while before we were, in a sense, losing decay property, in a sense. Then we can also combine the two, looking at the so-called Sobolev Kato spaces or weighted uh, Sobolev spaces uh, here modeled on L2. And again, here is a combined uh, map given by the weight x to the L0 and the multiplier d to the sigma 0 actually lifts the h2 s sigma space to the h2 s minus the zero sigma minus sigma zero and in particular of course if s zero is equal to s and sigma zero is equal to sigma that is nothing else than l2 our best friend here okay then um, let me just uh, fix uh, some uh, some notation for what comes uh, next so that's just uh, to somehow let you know what are our convention for the Fourier transform. We have the two pi minus d half uh, over there in front of it when f is L1. Then uh, the v phi f will be the notation for the short time Fourier transform with respect to the window function phi, taken in S, where f is in general in S prime, and in particular when f is in L1, this is the usual integral form that I have just put there slide. The so-called Weil operator, Weil to differential operator with symbol A is defined in that way, in particular if A is a regular uh, symbol, then there is a more general definition for A uh, distribution. And uh, uh, the sharp product, the Weil symbol product uh, sharp, is just the corresponding symbol for the composition of, of WA and of WB. Another family of uh, operators, uh, which is interesting for us, are the so-called triplets operators with symbol A, which are defined in this way through the product in L2, and by means also of the short time Fourier transforms, that's the definition. And it's a fact uh, that one can write a uh, triplet operator in terms of uh, Pseudo differential operator with certain by quantization, and the symbol is obtained by taking the convolution of the original symbol A with the Wigner distribution that I have uh, written at the bottom of the slide over there. Okay, so these are all well known facts. Apologies to the, to the expert, but I don't know exactly the composition of the audience, so I will prefer to give full, full uh, definitions and full notation here and in the next uh, few slides. Wait, so now we have to introduce uh, the family of modulation spaces we want, and to this aim, I will spend a few words of what uh, are the weights that we consider. In particular, we say that a moderate weight uh, uh, is a function, positive function that satisfies that estimate for a shootable function B, which is positive. In particular, uh, denoting by PE the set of all moderate weights on RD, then a result by Gurekenik says that they always satisfy for some uh, positive R the estimate uh, star prime. Uh, more specifically, for us, the P0E uh, space of weights is the subspace of those that actually uh, satisfy the same estimate for all positive R. And in particular, you have the very specialized set of the so called polynomially moderated weight P. So there, actually, you can take V to have polynomial growth at infinity. Another series of definition, the Gelfand shield of sigma one and S one that uh, we will use. So uh, consists of all the functions that uh, have uh, the additional uh, exponential decay here for both the F and F hat 
either for every or for some positive R, depending if you are on the sigma one or S one. And there are well-known equivalent definitions in terms of <coughs> these direct estimations in terms of uh, multiplication and differentiation for the <coughs> x to the alpha and d beta operators. Again, either for every or for some positive R. Then it's a fact uh, that these are all, of course, the subspaces of S by definition, and there is also this inclusion, sigma 1 to S1, and the opposite inclusion for the dual uh, spaces. Uh, this is the definition of the weighted modulation space MPQ omega. So take, uh, say, any principal model space, window functions in sigma 1, and any PQ positive, <clears throat> then the modulation space MPQ omega consists of all the distributions in sigma 1 prime, such that uh, that uh, norm, that, uh, that uh, expression integral there, is finite. So it's also well known that uh, this definition does not depend on the choice uh, of the window function provided in that space, and that there are these uh, <clears throat> inclusions. Uh, this holds for the uh, general moderated space P0 here, actually. So you have to take this uh, in the P0 space, and in particular, when this is polynomially moderated, actually, these inclusions are uh, in the Schwartz and corresponding spaces of Schwartz functions and distribution. Again, here you can take instead phi in S. So these are all well-known facts. So some properties very quickly. Uh, in particular, uh, there will be uh, sometimes uh, the need for, for indicating uh, the spaces which correspond to this split uh, weight here. So the Special form of the weight here is very useful when you want to derive uh, properties. So here it's in the product form x to the t and xi to the s. And in particular, again, you can recover some of the spaces I mentioned before just by choosing appropriately either the st uh, parameters or the pq parameters. Also, uh, you have uh, good properties uh, under this uh, exchange of role of let's see on the x uh, up to this change of sign. So, in particular, this Fourier transform uh, equivalence for the for the norms, and okay, essentially the the, the properties you you like to have uh, for the duality and the immersions uh, under the choices of the parameters and of the weight. The whole here is very very nice, and these spaces are widely used. Used by Python as further studied by Gerken, Toft, and many, many others <coughs> people. Some of them are present here today. Uh, as I said, widely used in time frequency analysis, signal processing, and PD theory. Now I need to introduce the symbolic settings, so the spaces of uh, symbols that actually we, we employ. So the simplest one is the S omega uh, space, and uh, that is the definition. So actually you want that all the derivatives are bounded from above by the weight omega, and in particular, the usual uh, Hormander uh, type S00 uh, symbol space is nothing else than S1. The actual family of symbols we want to, to use uh, is the one that uh, is made up of functions that uh, satisfy this kind of uh, of uh, Gevray type estimates for weights uh, which have this kind of, uh, of uh, moderateness here in terms of exponential functions. By previous result by Capiello and Toft, there is a good calculus for these uh, symbols. Again, <clears throat> when you compose operators uh, defined by means of the symbol classes, they compose nicely. So the sharp product allow you to remain in the same class up to multiplication of the weights and keeping of the same of the same parameter s. Uh, okay, this is just uh, for future reference. Gamma zero zero s is nothing else than the symbol space is associated with the weight uh, one, and then that's a subspace of s zero zero zero. Again, just some historical remarks. So, starting point: this result uh, in two thousand and two by Bojato, Cordero, and Grekenik for Schubing Sobol spaces. There, if you have your standard weight in terms of x and psi, then uh, First of all, it's a fact that the schubing sobol space is nothing else than M2 omega S as the equality with the shootable 
uh, <coughs> suitable uh, spaces M, and it's a fact also that uh, the third list operator with the symbol omega s is a lift between M2 omega s and L2. Now, let me just make this remark here, uh, compared with the simple lifting that I mentioned before, uh, this weight is not of split form, so that's not a product. And of, of course, uh, this makes uh, everything much more complicated because the X and Xi variables interact one with each other step. And this, again, makes computations and proofs a lot more uh, challenging in general. Then, uh, further, Results in this setting were given by Bojat and Toft some years later for a general polynomially moderated weight and for modulation spaces, weight and modulation spaces MPQ omega zero. So here the special requirement is essentially that omega zero behaves as a symbol. That's the hypothesis you see here on the second line. Then further, 2011, Grokinik and Toft again polynomially uh, moderated weights and PP omega zero lifts any MPQ omega to the corresponding MPQ omega over omega zero. Again, here, the removal of the hypothesis on the, on the derivatives of omega zero. So any, any omega zero will do this. Then further, 2013, the remotion of the requirement of being polynomially Moderated. So this can be proved. They were able to prove it actually for weights which are in the P0E space up to a requirement having this uh, special form. They should have been depending only on these combinations of uh, couples Xj and Xij. And again, the same, the same result. Okay, focusing a little bit more on this series of paper by Grekenik and Toft, what did we do? Uh, essentially, we removed the constraint about this special form of the weight. So this uh, actually we proved to hold true for any couple of weights chosen in P0. So that's our our contribution to this to this story. Okay, let me just uh, tell you a couple of things uh, quickly about how this uh, can be proved. And of course, Nenad, please. Uh, uh, let me know when I have to stop. I don't know exactly how long time I still have, in a couple of minutes. Uh, so the idea is uh, the following. First of all, the proof, uh, the result by Grekenik and Toft was uh, running this way. Uh, observation about uh, third-list operators and uh, vial operators, in the way that I described before. And this gives TP phi omega zero continuous between these two uh, wave modulation spaces. Uh, then, in particular, when I choose this specific weight, omega zero to the one half, there is a lifting between M2 theta and M2 one over theta, and let's denote by T1 the inverse. Then, uh, bonish man result in the calculus, uh, we can invert of WA uh, remaining in the same setting up to choosing the symbol in S one over R theta. It follows that this composition is bijective on L2, and by the symbolic calculus, the symbol C is of order zero. And finally, then uh, taking the inverse of op WC gives you again, in view to the calculus, a good operator in another uh, symbolic space, S1 over omega zero. Then by these properties and general continuity results, one obtains what one wants. TP omega zero and T1 are continuous. And also it turns out that by duality, they are inverse to each other. So that's exactly what we wanted to achieve. And so this is the sketch of the proof. So for our result, what, what are the differences? So the scheme is very similar. So essentially step one holds true, provided one takes you know, shootable uh, windows as one in the uh, space is gamma, so in the symbolic space is gamma. Step two is just the uh, same argument, so nothing new here. Step three needs to be replaced by a, a similar statement in the gamma symbolic spaces, and that I leave it there. Step four, 
again, works fine, provided the T prime is being proved. And similarly, also step five works uh, in the same way, just by exchanging the symbolic space. So main point is how to prove T prime. So that is Sandra. the results. I'm, I'm going to finish in really one minute. Okay. So that's how we how we did it. So that's really the real nightmare. Uh, I will not give any detail about that because that's uh, long and difficult, but essentially by estimates and bills characterization and so on, we can prove it. And the other point was to solve to solve a simple valid evolution equation. That was really the challenging and hard part, the long part of the course. Examples. So essentially we can have our results applied to modulation spaces uh, given by this specific sort of weight. And OK, that doesn't look to be that uh, nice, uh, but because uh, these are still polynomially uh, moderated weights. But actually, what one can do is to go to exponential weight. Actually. And this actually was something that was not covered by the previous theory. Uh, that's the big result that I will not comment. Let me just skip all of this. So the paper has been published recently in analysis and applications, and I thank you very much for your attention. Okay. So. <clears throat> I will just check uh, if we have some questions from chat. No. Not at this moment. Uh, so uh, since we have a few more minutes, and if there are no uh, a further chat question. Oh, okay. So, Professor Pilipovic. It's good that you didn't speak about the last part because then you need uh, four to five minutes more. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. At least, uh, at least, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, I skipped it completely. But you know that I, I'm always equipped with many more slides than I can actually present. That's just the standard. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, the, the paper is 60 pages as I see it. Correctly, exactly. yeah. If exactly. I'm correct. As I said, uh, there are some parts which are really a bit uh, of a nightmare, but I mean, that was nice, uh, nice challenge to, to solve that, actually. That was interesting to me, to, to get into this uh, Gevray world for the first time in my life, actually. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I, so I started from something again. simple, as you see. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you again. Thank you to you. Thank you very much to you. And we will try to connect with Snežana Maksimovic, our next speaker. Okay, we see Snežana. Dobre. So maybe you can try also to share your screen. Sadiana, I really want this cross border. Ali, ovde mi još na ovom drugom ekranu mi je... Da, a on nju, ne vidim na ovom bliže nekada. Aha, okej. A, we still have one minute, so Snežana, relax for one more minute. Or maybe we can, I can just announce you and then this will be that one minute. So, our next speaker is Snežana Maksimović from Banja Luka University and the title is Directional Showtime Fourier Transform of Alpha Distributions, and I think we can start with the talk. Please, Nezhana. Okay, do you hear me? Yes, 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 we hear you. We see you and okay. hear you. Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to greet uh, all of you, especially my colleagues from Novi Sad, Professor Filipovic, Professor Telfanov, and others. Um, I am very pleased to uh, participate uh, today in this conference dedicated uh, to Professor Arpad Stakaci. Uh, I will speak about the national short time for a transform of ultra distributions. Uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, professors uh, Sanja Atanasova from uh, Macedonia and Professor Stevan Pilipovic from uh, University of Novi Sad. Uh, firstly, uh, I will, will speak about uh, motivation. Uh, this is the plan of my talk. Uh, then about uh, definition and properties. Uh, 
k-directional short time Fourier transform. Uh, then uh, I will speak about continuity properties. Uh, this uh, is the main result. Uh, and uh, at last, about uh, k-directional short time Fourier transform uh, on a dual of uh, galvan schiller spaces, the space of tempered ultra distribution. Uh, firstly, about uh, motivation, uh, Grafakos uh, and Sansing uh, in uh, their work, Gabor, frames and directional time frequency analysis, uh, developed the concept of uh, direct directional sensitive variant uh, of the short time free transform. Uh, some slightly different concepts uh, give give uh, in a uh, directional short time Fourier transform uh, when, uh, when uh, where he defined uh, the directional short time Fourier uh, transform. Uh, then uh, Sanya Atanasova and uh, Katarina Saneva uh, in uh, their publication directional short time Fourier uh, transform of uh, distributions. Uh, uh, analyze the di directional short time uh, Fourier transform on Schwartz uh, test. Mm -hmm. no, for, for some moment we lost you. Okay, uh, so is, now we have now, you, we okay. have you back. So we heard this okay. uh, uh, this last result of of uh, Sanya and uh, Katerina. So you can continue. Okay, okay. we have you again. Okay. Uh, in uh, publication, directional time frequency analysis and uh, directional uh, regularity. Uh, this is publication uh, by uh, professors uh, Stevan Pilipovic, uh, Sanya Atanasova, and Katarina Saneva. Uh, the results are extended uh, through the through the investigation of uh, the short time Fourier transform. Uh, in the fixing the fixed direct uh, they fix the direction you uh, where you uh, is uh, in unit sphere uh, in uh, n dimensional spaces uh, and uh, they obtain uh, results uh, over the, the, the distributions of exponential type uh, and the wavefront wavefront sets uh, in uh, preprint uh, Directional short time Fourier transform of uh, ultra distributions. Uh, we, uh, Atanasov, Maximovich, and Filipovich, obtained uh, some results uh, involve uh, the directional short time Fourier transform in the direction of uh, U. Uh, we fix uh, direction U uh, again in units pair. Uh, we obtain a results for analyzed and synthesis operator over Gelfand Schiller uh, spaces uh, only in a Rumi case uh, because the Bjorling case uh, is uh, similar. Uh, and uh, we obtained uh, some results uh, on their duals. Uh, also, we deal uh, with uh, the wave fronts. Uh, of uh, directional short time Fourier transform, uh, but uh, I will skip now today. Uh, the spaces of ultra distributions, uh, these are definition of locally convex spaces, spaces uh, of uh, smooth function uh, with uh, this supremum uh, norm. Uh, these spaces, uh, the alpha age of K, these uh, are the spaces of this smooth function, uh, which are compactly supported, uh, and the definition uh, of um, 
the spaces uh, of uh, the test spaces of spaces of ultra uh, distribution, uh, which is uh, projective limits when h goes to zero. Uh, I will skip uh, this now uh, because uh, I have no time for explanation. Uh, the Gelfand the Shiloh spaces uh, let alpha, beta, a uh, are bigger than zero. Uh, we define the space uh, SA alpha, beta of Ferron D. Uh, this is Banach space of smooth function uh, with uh, this uh, supremum uh, norm. Uh, and the Gelfand Shiloh uh, spaces uh, is uh, the uh, inductive limits uh, when uh, a goes uh, to uh, zero. Uh, we also uh, only deal with uh, Gevray sequences, uh, p factorial on beta or alpha, alpha beta, uh, alpha plus beta uh, is uh, bigger than one. Uh, the definition uh, of ultra differential operator is uh, the following. Uh, this is uh, only Rumi case uh, and the corresponding ultra polynomial has uh, this um, uh, bound. Um, the definition of uh, short time Fourier transform uh, of uh, function f uh, from uh, L2 with the window function is uh, defined, excuse me, is defined uh, as this uh, integral uh, and synthesis operator uh, on L2 R2D is defined on this uh, way. Uh, if uh, phi is a synthesis uh, window for G, uh, then uh, this reconstruction uh, formula holds point wisely. Uh, we can um, um, <clears throat> uh, generalize. Uh, 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 we uh, have um, uh, obtained uh, the definition of uh, Fourier transform uh, for a larger class uh, than L2. Uh, now, this is uh, our definition of uh, k-directional short time Fourier transform. Uh, let uh, you on uh, k uh, are uh, ve uh, is defined uh, as uh, uh, this uh, on this uh, way where uh, u e e is uh, from one to k are independent vectors from unit uh, sphere and uh, let uh, y tilde this is notation uh, uh, since y tilde uh, is in r on k so we use this notation for r on k and uh, uh, u double tilde uh, when uh, is uh, y in r on uh, n minus k and uh, g is from Gelfan chilo spaces over r on k without a zero the uh, definition of uh, k directional short time for a transform of l2 function is uh, defined uh, of this way by one. Uh, this is uh, in this integral over R on N. Um, the, the synthesis operator uh, is defined on this way. Uh, these are definition of uh, analysis and synthesis operators. Uh, now, uh, if uh, phi uh, is synthesis window for G, uh, this uh, we uh, prove that uh, this reconstruction formula uh, holds uh, point wisely. Uh, so this relation uh, takes uh, the form of uh, the composition of uh, synthesis and uh, analysis operator. Uh, now I will speak about coordinate uh, transformation. Uh, why this is important? Uh, because um, uh, we uh, deal with uh, arbitrary vectors uh, from unit sphere. Uh, if we use uh, this transformation, we will deal uh, only with uh, uh, unit vectors. Uh, and uh, this uh, work uh, is more simpler. Uh, a is a matrix uh, order k times uh, n with uh, rows uh, 
uh, u on e uh, which uh, are independent uh, vectors uh, and uh, e is uh, identity matrix uh, ma matrix uh, b uh, of order n square matrix uh, is determined by a and uh, unit uh, matrix uh, with uh, b uh, multiplied by t is c uh, where uh, c1 till uh, uh, ck is defined uh, on that way uh, and from uh, s um, k plus one till s n is defined uh, on that way uh, and this matrix is uh, invertible matrix and we will put uh, c is uh, b on minus uh, one uh, a on k is uh, unit uh, uh, vec vectors uh, so uh, so uh, uh, we uh, will change the variables uh, and t is uh, because uh, c is uh, inverse of b t is uh, c s uh, and uh, eta is uh, transport uh, transposed matrix of uh, c multiply multiplied by c so we can obtain this uh formula one uh is transformed uh, to formula four uh where we instead of um, a vector uh, u on k uh, have uh, these uh, vectors uh, e uh, we have uh, from arbitrary vector from unit sphere uh, we obtain uh, unit uh, vectors uh, and the uh, function h of uh, c is uh, defined uh, on uh, that way uh, and the uh, synthesis operator is transformed to uh, this uh, form again uh, with uh, unit vectors uh, some remarks uh, if f is in galfanchillo spaces uh, then this function is also in galfanchillo spaces and uh, if uh, we uh, put that uh, g of s1 till sk is this product uh, then uh, our uh, cut directional short time tr uh, Fourier transform is form of uh, this uh, and this is partial short time Fourier transform uh, the main results um, theorem uh, one uh, this uh, theorem uh, proves continuity of uh, analyzing operator uh, and uh, the this theorem says uh, that uh, uh, this uh, directional short time Fourier transform is continuous mapping uh, from uh, this spaces uh, to this space. Uh, also, uh, we uh, have to prove uh, the same, the similar results uh, for uh, the opposite results uh, for uh, synthesis operator. This means uh, that uh, we have to prove that uh, the synthesis operator is continuous mapping from this multiplicate by this space into this space. Uh, so we also prove that uh, that uh, the synthesis operator is uh, continuous uh, mapping from this to these spaces. Uh, we escape this. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, in the proof we have uh, problems with G uh, with the um, window function. Uh, so we. Uh, can only assume that G is uh, in S alpha zero, not beta zero uh, of uh, R on K. So we prove that uh, as corollary of the previous theorem that uh, this mapping uh, the, is continuous. Uh, so the uh, uh, synthesis operator uh, is a continuous uh, mapping fro for, from these spaces to these spaces uh, and the window function uh, is from these spaces. 
uh, now we uh, want to prove uh, some results uh, on dual of the spaces uh, temperate alter distributions. Uh, so uh, uh, the continu uh, continuity results uh, allow us to define uh, the K uh, directional short time Fourier transform uh, for function uh, F uh, in a dual uh, for temperate alter distribution uh, as uh, an element of uh, these spaces, the dual of uh, gelfand schiller spaces uh, of this form. And the action uh, is uh, on test function is defined on that way, uh, where these brackets uh, means uh, dual pairing. Uh, so uh, we can define k-directional short time Fourier transform uh, in direct method. This means uh, that definition. Uh, so we proved uh, in using um, these things uh, that uh, two definition uh, of the k directional short time Fourier transform uh, of uh, function f, uh, which is the impaired alter distribution, coincide. Uh, we uh, also want to prove the same results. Uh, the, for the similar results uh, for um, uh, synthesis operator. Uh, so uh, definition um, is uh, the following, uh, which uh, this means again, uh, dual pairing. Uh, and uh, if F uh, if, uh, is uh, in these spaces of the form, uh, of uh, this, this is uh, ultra differential operator uh, of uh, Rumi class uh, alpha, and uh, this is ultra differential polynomial of Rumi class uh, beta. Uh, so we again uh, similar as uh, in uh, analysis operator uh, defined. Uh, by direct method synthesis operator. Uh, so we uh, prove that to definition uh, of uh, car synthesis operator uh, in uh, these spaces of temperate alter distribution coincide. Uh, so uh, this proposition and previewed the proposition uh, give uh, as a result, if uh, G is a uh, window function the in uh, S alpha zero, uh, then uh, K directional short time free transform uh, and synthesis operators uh, are continuous linear ones. Uh, also in this uh, paper, we deal uh, we, with uh, the way front send but we will skip it, but I will skip it now. Thank you for your attention. So thank you, Snežana. Uh, we will just check if there are some chat questions, not at this moment. Uh, so thank you once again, and uh, we will try to connect. Oh, is it somewhere, something? Just a minute. Okay. Okay, let me let me read it. Aha, okay. So uh this is to some some other person. It's not a question for uh yeah, it's not a question for our speaker. So it's another conversation was there. Uh -huh. So okay, okay, thank you once again. Uh and uh, now we will try to connect with our next speaker. Bye. So, Joachim, let us bye. Let us try to see if Joachim is online. Hello. He's there. Hello. We hear you. O okay. We, we we see you as well. Okay. Fine. Okay, fine. So ne the next step is. Uh, Oh, uh, you can try to share your screen to see yeah. your presentation. Okay, we see your presentation. Okay. And, uh, so let me see. I think uh, it. So, aha, 
Ah, okay. Yes, you can. You can. This is very nice. Is it so fine? We are, yeah, we are online. We are happy to have you with us. Oh. And uh, I can I can simply announce. Uh, it's our pleasure to announce Professor Toft. And as we see, this is uh, a topic of analytic pseudo differential calculus, and we are Bargman transform as well. So, Professor Toft, please give us a nice talk. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, can you hear me well? Leonard? Yes, everyone can hear you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Everything is fine. Okay, fine. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would uh, like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to this event and also especially to take part of this uh, memorial um, meeting for uh, Professor Akkad Takachi. Uh, it was actually a person I learned to know one, the first time I was in Sad, and he was ve always very polite and took very much care about us. Uh, so I regret to see that he really passed away now. Uh, so, um, and also he explained a lot about things also outside the mathematics. Uh, so, well, well, I enjoyed very much his company. So the plan of the talk, you have already got an explanation about what it should deal with. And uh, so I'm going to discuss a little bit about what happens with test function and distributions, etc., under the Bergman transform, okay? Uh, and then I will discuss analytic pseudo differential and integral operators. So basically the Bergman transform is something that takes you the usual function and distributions into suitable spaces of uh, analytic functions, entire functions. The talk is based on, um, well, first of all, some contributors. Well, this is, of course, not a complete list, but uh, we can see some contributors here. And also the talk is based on these two pages. And uh, where the last one appeared very recently, this year, actually. Okay. Um, so uh, we recall the definition, you have seen them in, talks before here, uh, the Schwarz space, and also the definition of these Gelfand-Schilo spaces here, where we put somehow more detailed um, and global restrictions on the, with respect to derivatives and multiplications with these monomials here. And we have two types of Gelfand-Schilo spaces, one of Romieu type, where we where this kind of estimate should hold for some h and the other one of Burling type where this estimate should hold for every h greater than zero. Mm. Uh, and by the definitions it's not so difficult to see that we have these kind of embeddings and they are really dense and also um, we have some conditions that these spaces should be trivial or not. This happens exactly around well, s equal to one half is a critical value, one can say, in both situations. Uh, so that, but you, you, I, you have seen this in earlier talks, I have seen. So I just pass to the next slide. Um, a nice way to describe these uh, kind of function and also the distribution spaces concerns uh, these hermit function expansions. Uh, and very much of this is uh, done thanks to Stefan Pelipovic that we, I have seen is uh, in the audience. Um, so, um, uh, what we can do now is actually that we can uh, first describe, well, we can introduce spaces of Hermit series expansions. We recall that actually these kind of uh, Hermit functions, they are an orthonormal basis on L2. So now, but now formally we can now take other type of expansions where we put uh, other type of uh, estimates on these coefficients, then let's say that they should be bounded with respect to discrete L2 norm. 
Uh, so we introduced this, and these are these are called Pilipovich spaces. And again, we have two different types of Romieu type and of Berling type. Uh, with Romieu, we say that this kind of estimate should hold uh, for some r greater than zero. And with the Berling type, it should be for every r greater than zero. Uh, but we have also some uh, limit situations that of special interest. Uh, uh, so uh, this we usually call Pilipovich flat space. Uh, because we use notation flat here, flat notation. Uh, but also, I like this terminology, flat space, okay? Um, so, in this situation, uh, we put, instead of having exponential type uh, estimate, we put with factorials. Uh, so, this is the definition. And also, we can just talk about all finite expansions, which we just denote at h0. And uh, if we now introduce this kind of ordering, so if we put this flat uh, sigma 1 less than flat sigma 2, if sigma 1 is less than sigma 2, and uh, also we we'll say that this is less than 1 half, but also larger than s, when s is a real number less than one half, then it turns out that we have this kind of uh, embeddings. Mm. So, okay, can, can we relate this flat space, these Pilipovich spaces, uh, uh, to some um, well known spaces? Yes, we can, because Pilipovich, he proved 1986 uh, that um, they actually agree with Gelfand-Schilo spaces, Fourier invariant Gelfand-Schilo spaces, as long as these spaces are non-trivial. But, uh, for example, the Gelfand-Schilo space sigma one-half is a trivial space. It could have just one element. The um, this is actually different from this should actually be uh, this set here, which is the same as uh, actually uh, the Pilipovich uh, space of order one half. So um, uh, as long as Gelfand-Schilo spaces are non-trivial, they are the same. But as long as the Gelfand-Schilo spaces are trivial, they become actually different, at least when we talk about, let's say, s greater than or equal to one half. Uh, but this is uh, actually, uh, one can actually prove that um, these Pilipovich spaces, they are more or less always non-trivial. There is actually only one Pilipovich space that is trivial. And this is H0, zero, zero. so this H0 in a Berling situation is trivial, but otherwise they are all non-trivial and contain all Hermit functions. So they are still dense, for example, in L2, etc., and also in the Schwarz space and so on. Okay. And also it's we should uh, deal with uh, corresponding dual, spaces or distribution spaces. The difference then is that one replace this minus sign in the exponent here with a plus sign, both in this, how to say, non-flat situation and in the flat situation. And one has also, one also need to swap this for some, for every, etc. So it becomes completely the opposite here, okay? So, um, and also then it's convenient to put H0 prime to be all formal expansions. Okay. Um, then one can actually prove that uh, these spaces here, they are really the duals of these uh, Pilipovich spaces. So this we call now Pilipovich dual or Pilipovich distribution spaces. 
Okay, so this was about the Pilip bridge spaces, and we know that they somehow contain the set of uh, Gelfand-Schilo spaces that are Fourier invariant. We only talk about this classical Gelfand-Schilo spaces. Well, we shall also consider questions about the Bergman transform and the space of analytic functions. It turns out that these spaces, Pilipovic uh, spaces, have very interesting uh, images under the Bergman transform. This is the definition of the Bergman transform. So what you have is uh, you have your functional distribution. This can also be interpreted in distribution sense, of course. Then you take a global Fourier Laplace transform and you get a, something complex valued function. Well, first you actually multiply with the a Gaussian, and then you perform this uh, for global Fourier Laplace transform. And after that, you multiply with the complex Gaussian here. And here, these brackets here are the should be uh, what we have here. And also, when we have a soft bracket, it's the scalar product. We also let A of CD be the set of all entire functions on CD. Uh, we put A with uh, exponent 2 to be the Hilbert space of all entire functions which satisfy this kind of norm estimate. Here the mu is the Gaussian measure. The lambda here is the Lebesgue measure. The A2 scalar products, well it's easy to see from this norm that it must be like this. It can then be proved that this Bergman transform we had over here is a bijective isometry from L2 to this Hilbert space of analytic functions. This is one thing. This was proved already by Bergman, 1961. One can also show that this act by the Bergman transform into these very convenient monomials. This implies that the Hermit function expansion, as we have seen before, is more becomes more or less when you make a Bergman transform of this expansion, it becomes essentially the Taylor series expansion with the center at origin of the Bergman transformed function or distribution. Okay. We have also something important here: a reproducing kernel. This means that if f is admissible, we can form this expression here. The mu is still this measure, this Gaussian measure. And if we now put uh, f into this class, Hilbert space of analytic functions, then one can, it's not so difficult to prove that this, uh, if you take then this operator acting on f, you regain f, you get back f, okay? But otherwise, if you take the corresponding, let's say, L2 space with respect to this measure, then this pi A will be an orthonormal projection that projects uh, elements in that space orthonormally to this set A2. Okay. So now we look at uh, in the corresponding power series expansions where we have replaced these hermit functions with these monomials. That the smaller space is just a set of analytic polynomials. So this means that this uh, series here should be a finite series. The opposite A0 prime is you take all such formal expansions. In the algebra, this is usually denoted in this way. And then when S is in this R flat, uh, we just let AS here be defined in similar way with the same type of estimates on the coefficients as we had for the Pilipovic spaces. And this is the function spaces, well, that corresponds to the function spaces. 
Here, instead, we have taken the same type of arrangement as for the Filipovic distribution spaces. Mm. So now from this mapping, we can now define that if we have such an expansion, then the Bergman transform of this expansion is of this form. This will coincide with the other definitions we had about the Bergman transform, in the case that we have put F in L2. And it, by the definitions, it follows that all these mappings here are bijective and actually also continuous with continuous inverse. It's very evident how to define the topology, the topologies on this, all these spaces. We just do it by this kind of, uh, well, multiply this with, uh, well, the one over this, of course, and then say that this should be finite etc so this will define a series of semi norms etc okay okay characterizations of course one thing is that we have these power series expansions but can we view them as some nice sets of analytic functions well First of all, we can see by the definition, it follows that this A flat one prime is exactly the set of all entire functions on CD. And uh, this means that um, we have these kind of inclusions. So all these spaces without primes are subset of the set of analytic functions. At all, and also some of these are called now distribution spaces because they will be, they are actually distribution spaces to uh, the dual spaces, I should say. They are the duals to these spaces. Okay. And, um, but if you take this S0 small enough, become larger, they will contain all entire functions. And by some calculations, it turns out that if S0, if, if you have small S0 here, less than one half, then we have this kind of estimates. If you're on the Plipovich flats space situations, we have uh, spaces of entire functions fulfilling conditions of this type, etc. And uh, if we take uh, the others here, we see here, here are in the Gelfand-Schilo span. Uh, and here we have, how to say, Bayon Gelfand-Schilo life. These spaces are larger than any Gelfand-Schilo distribution space. Okay. Um, okay. Now we come to this analytic pseudo differential operators. Uh, so now we suppose that there are suitable functions and analytic in Z. Uh, then we define the analytic pseudo differential operators, also called the Wick operator, with symbol A of this kind. Okay. Um, so you can see that if we take A equal to one, we just regain the reproducing kernel. Uh, we can also uh, remove this uh, exponential function, and then we see that we get an analytic uh, kernel operator or, multi or integral operator of this kind. So, um, first of all, we can see that they are very, how to say, heavily uh, related, so they are almost the same. It's more differences between, let's say, an usual pseudo differential operators and the corresponding kernel operators there than it is in here in the analytic situation. Uh, in the case that we have a polynomial 
well, we take the conjugate of W and take a polynomial uh, with respect to this conjugate of W. Then we get a usual uh, analytic um, differential operator of this kind. If A, Z and W is analytic, then it turns out that it's just become a multiplication operator with A, Z, Z, etc. Mm. And also there are some kind of um, interesting, one, if one take chi to be the, of A of Z, W to be the characteristic function with respect to W, that is one in a polydisc, uh, then one can actually show that these kind of operators are bijective between suitable uh, spaces of this kind. You have to choose this S in a little bit good ways. Mm. So there are a lot of things here to find out. Okay. Um, so um, I now continue a little bit. Um, so what we usually do is that we assume that our A as well as K should be analytic in Z and conjugated analytic in W. So this is what we, the natural setup, okay? It also turns out that in the usual situation with more general, so it's not needed to be an conjugated analytic in W, one can always find another K or A such that uh, we can get the same operator, but with such A and K that are conjugated analytic in W. Uh, we also let this be the set of all continuous mappings from the topological vector space, etc. And then one can easily see this. Somehow this should not say that it's only because of us, because it somehow follows very straightforward from earlier theories here. By, um, because of the easy links between hermit function expansions and uh, these sets of uh, analytic functions, okay? But, um, so that's, about, so one can essentially um, identify these spaces by the set of linear operators from the dual to the, the in this way. Okay. What uh, me and Nenad found was actually that this operator that takes a kernel into multiplication with um, with this exponential type is a continuous bijection on these two spaces. But we have to assume that S1 is less than or equal to one half and S2 is strictly less than one half, but still allowed to be uh, in, um, I think it's a mistake here. It's also allowed to be, let's say in the, a flat number, how to say. Uh, by combining this <clears throat> with the earlier kernel theorems, we can now actually get that we can identify all such operators, at least for such choices of S1 and S2, by pseudo differential operators. So they will, in abstract sense of harmonic analysis, span all um, such operators. I see now that I'm very out of time, uh, but I have just one slice left. And I can just tell you also that uh, one can put L2, LP conditions on these um, <clears throat> symbols. Um, so we can consider this kind of uh, sets and then take the set of all functions that are analytic satisfying these kind of conditions. It's easy to see that this, if we take omega zero equal to <clears throat> one and P equal to two, we get a two space here, okay? And uh, we also take <clears throat> all these kernels that are conjugate analytic here. And uh, what we can, were able to prove, me and Professor Teofanov, is the following here. So if we have set this, that suitable set this conditions on the this Lebesgue exponent, uh, then our kernel operator is continuous in this way. And what we can do is we can now actually use a bijectivity property from modulation spaces MP to these kind of set of entire functions. 
And by doing this, we can actually regain uh, this recycle by Gröchen Heil and by myself on um, having ordinary pseudo differential operator and a symbol in modulation space. And then if this is true, we get that this is continuous from MP1 to MP2. So, well, there are also some continuations, but I will leave this for future talks. Thank you very much for your attention. So, thank you, Joachim, for this nice presentation. Uh, let us check if we have some questions for you at this moment. We don't have uh, any questions. Maybe Professor Filipovic uh, will. I, I have maybe because uh, it's I have to stay here. It's a funny question or stupid one. Uh, did you consider uh, this uh, Bergman measure uh, related to to white noise measure? Because uh, what uh, came to my mind is that Bergman and Einstein did <laughs> some joint work at the, uh, a long time ago uh, at the beginning, but somehow the. The form of white noise measure is similar to that one, and so this just came to my mind. Did you see this, or did you think about that, or maybe it's just a, just a dream? Uh, to be well, I have seen this white noise measure, but I forgot what it is actually. Uh, the same same form of, of, of with the exponential. Uh, uh, what, 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 one can say that if as if you take any kind of process with a, let's say global first you multiply with the gaussian and then you um, uh, make a global fourier laplace transform then uh, you came to all some equivalent uh, objects so everything it's just a, comes out some rescaling factors then so yeah, just for, for for thinking about nothing more in this moment. Yeah, but I I will check a little bit more about this. Thank you. Okay. So let's thank our speaker again. Uh, thank you, Joachim. Thank and, you very much. Uh, now we will try to connect with uh, the next speaker. Lubica Oponica, she is in Belgium now, I think. And she may here. try to connect. I hear you, Lubica, but soon I believe I will see you as well. So, so okay, we see your slides, but at this moment we don't see your face. We see I Huh. Did, um, Maybe. Oh, okay. Now, now here we are. So, you see me. Everything is fine. Okay. I think you. we can we can start. Why not? Uh, so, uh, Lubitz open. It will speak about distributed order fractional wave equation. Please, Lubitz. Mm, thank you, Nana, very much. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, first thanks to organizers for kind invitation to be part of this event, which is dedicated to Professor Arpov Takachi. I mean, he was very gentle and kind man and uh, also dear and friendly person. And uh, he will stay in my memories as a such. So somehow, yeah, I regret that we don't have him anymore. So my talk, my contribution uh, to this conference uh, is my joint work with uh, my colleagues Sanya Konyuk and Dusan Zorica. And, uh, title, uh, and uh, it is actually published in a paper, uh, title you can find uh, in the book of contracts. So uh, we there consider fractional type wave equations, which are obtained by generalization of the classical wave equation. And the generalization is done uh, within the theory of fractional calculus in order to model wave propagation in viscoelastic media. Equations are uh, of the form uh, of in partial integral 
differential equation here uh, given in the box considered on R2 and uh, we search uh, our solutions in uh, space of uh, temporal distribution such that uh, over R2 such that, support, that they are supported in uh, right half plane. Here uh, L of T uh, could or does not have to depend on alpha, it will actually depend on a constitutive equation we are considering. And in this case, constitutive equation is going to be of the more, most general uh, um, type of distributed order one. And uh, since there uh, we integrate over alpha, so our operator again will not depend. So, uh, we are concerned uh, about uh, for existence and uniqueness of uh, such equations. We use uh, Fourier and Laplace transform, and as I said, solution are finding spaces of distribution. And uh, we connect uh, our results, uh, in particular, wave speed propagation with uh, material property, properties that uh, are uh, uh, described by constant equation. So first, let me just uh, briefly review that uh, Riemann-Liouville fractional derivative is a uh, derivative uh, uh, of order alpha between zero and one, which should be considered here. Of course, it can be extended for higher order. is given with this blue formula. And let me tell that uh, in the distributional settings uh, that we are going to work here, uh, uh, Caputo fractional derivative, which is much more uh, useful for applications uh, coincides here with Riemann Liouville. In distributional settings, we uh, define uh, fractional derivative by the use of this family of uh, functions belonging to X prime plus, and uh, those are all uh, convolution operator mapping the uh, functions from X prime plus into X prime plus, and in the case uh, when uh, here you e is between zero and one uh, if we convolve uh, our in this way defined uh, function f with our function u we obtain exactly this blue formula here the important properties for laplace and Fourier transform uh, for the fractional derivative uh, are that um, uh, when we take Laplace transform of derivative of alpha order, we obtain uh, Laplace transform of the function multiplied with the alpha power of uh, S. Our generalization uh, is uh, actually uh, general, uh, is actually generalization of elastic um, media. And could, could maybe one consider a wave propagation in elastic media. This is explained by three uh, equations equation of motion, concept of the second motion flow. Uh, here in this equation, U, are, U is displacement, rho is uh, density of material under the consideration, and sigma is uh, stress. The third equation is the strain measure, and these two equations uh, also for this elastic case will uh, stay same because those are kind of uh, laws, uh, physical laws. We don't like to change. And uh, the second equation in this elastic case is uh, slow, where E is Young's modulus of uh, elasticity and uh, depends on the material under the consideration and these three equations are equivalent to the main equation when one, when one uh, replaces uh, this one the third one the second one and then this one and the first one so if you like uh, to uh, talk about viscoelastic materials then one cannot anymore lose uh, slow but must go beyond that and then modeling uh, model uh, equation so a stress strain relation with uh, some other fractional center models some other linear fractional models or uh, with a distributed order model which is done here in all such cases 
uh, equation which is obtained will be a uh, wave equation similar like this one, as you can see. It is only that now const instead of constant, we have an operator acting on uh, the second derivative of the But let me tell you just a brief, uh, give you a few slides about consecutive equations for this elastic body. So, first, there was a tenor model, which was a model with integer derivatives on stress and strain side. And uh, uh, here, uh, constants that uh, our peers are experimentally determined and uh, uh, consequence, I mean, uh, restrictions that are posed by thermodynamics ask uh, from us to model this uh, with uh, so, such constants that A is less than B. Same thermodynamical restriction uh, one have if uh, we replace uh, first order derivative, the derivative of order alpha. And this is our favorite uh, general uh, tenor model, so fractional tenor model. But uh, one can think of a generalization of this equation in a way to take uh, more than one fractional derivative uh, on stress as well as on the strain side. And uh, then, uh, of course, one has to think of uh, thermodynamically consistent in our fractional models. Uh, and then uh, we were concerned with that together with Professor Kalarskovic uh, almost 10 years ago. So we obtained there were four cases, uh, four different cases uh, in which, uh, uh, when we pose these some restrictions, uh, quantitative equation is. Uh, consistent uh, thermodynamically. So first case is uh, to have same number of uh, order derivatives and the same orders, uh, which has to uh, satisfy these constraints and the fractional center model is one of these. Uh, then uh, we have a case when, uh, okay, we have same uh, orders uh, up to some moment, but then on the strain side, there are extra derivatives, and modified Zener model is a, a particular example of this. Of course, there are again uh, restrictions to the coefficients in the equation as well as on the orders of uh, uh, derivatives. Then uh, case three, now we have uh, more derivatives on the stress side, and again, uh, 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 restrictions are present and modified Maxwell model is one, uh, uh, let's say, known example of constitutive equation for this case. And then case three uh, allows uh, for fractional derivatives of stress and strain to be completely different, but uh, in a particular order. Maxwell model is uh, one uh, particular example of this. Uh, and then uh, one can go even beyond this and think of uh, pick up all possible derivatives uh, on the stress as well as on all possible derivatives on the strain. And then we come to distributed uh, order model. Uh, of course, then the, those sums are uh, replaced by the integral, and those constants are replaced by uh, some weight function. So, weight function which corresponds to the stress and weight, weight function, which corresponds to the strain. And then uh, for us, what was important, uh, it is that uh, distributed order fractional derivative, uh, one can define the, uh, also in the spaces of distributions. Uh, if uh, phi is uh, compactly supported uh, distribution, so I will not go into details, but this is very well defined. And what is important for uh, this work is that is how Laplace transform is applied to this object in S prime class. So it is again that uh, distributed order derivative Laplace transform of that one is again multiplication of the function with uh, actually this pairing of these two functions. So uh, in our model, we will have uh, so uh, the two big phi's uh, which you have which we have on the first slide, and those both of them will be actually functions of these uh, 
type uh, coming from uh, FICE uh, from constitutive patients. So those these two we have here. So for the existence and uniqueness, uh, we consider now a system where uh, the distributed order of fractional uh, uh, constitutive equation is considered. And the first task for us was to, to uh, show equivalence between this system and uh, uh, one equation, so fractional wave equation. And it is done when one applies a uh, plus transform on the second or uh, on the second equation here. So as you have seen just before, uh, when I apply now a fractional uh, uh, Laplace transform here, I obtain uh, this function times Laplace transform of sigma, and uh, also on the other side that uh, we replace. Uh, the equation the second, the second in the first, we obtain this uh, wave equation. And then uh, when these two uh, things, system and the wave equation are same or equivalent, uh, is obtained if this assumption one is uh, satisfied. So if there is a, a inverse of last form, uh, well-defined, we must comply, then we can say that these two equations, that system and equation are equivalent. And then uh, if we add uh, two more uh, assumptions, A2 and A3, then uh, we can state our theorem that uh, there is a unique solution for the general scholarship problem, which is given uh, uh, in this, uh, I, mean, I would say, uh, uh, standard way, where S uh, is actually fundamental solution. And this is actually uh, inverse Laplace transform of this uh, now function here. Uh, and uh, if we can uh, calculate uh, this uh, inverse Laplace transform, and this is possible in the case when A4, A5, and A6, these new three uh, uh, conditions are satisfied. So uh, then uh, we can calculate it, and I will soon show how does it look like. I will just tell here that all conditions are more or less uh, given on the ratio of these two functions. Uh, all assumptions are, uh, in a sense, technical, but in important cases uh, for us, or I mean for uh, you know, those that we know that thermodynamically consistent, you, as you will see, uh, they will be satisfied. So one can calculate uh, solution, uh, fundamental solution as uh, this S given here. Uh, during the calculation, one can see that uh, the, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, distribution has a support in the cone uh, with this constant C given now here as a wave speed of the wave propagation. Uh, and uh, it is given uh, as uh, 1 over k, where k is uh, uh, one of uh, the constants from this assumption scale. Uh, in particular, for the wave equation, uh, uh, c square uh, is um, uh, c uh, coincides with uh, the c in the wave equation, and uh, for a fractional center wave equation, our uh, wave speed is given with this uh, tau uh, being uh, this tau is a constant that in the case of fractional standard wave equation must be less than one. This is thermodynamical uh, restriction to that model. And okay, so uh, if we go to our four cases, uh, they are obtained if we take for our phi sigma and phi epsilon linear combinations of delta functions, then our integrals are uh, evaluated exactly in those alpha appearing here. And uh, one can show that not only in case one, which is proved in our some previous work, but also in all cases, case two, case three, and case four. So if we have, uh, for example, in case three, uh, something like this, and then if we have that, uh, that um, uh, these constraints are uh, satisfied, then uh, theorem, uh, our th theorem from previous slide, uh, actually says that there is a unique solution to the corresponding Cauchy problem. 
And also, uh, one can consider, I would say, genuine uh, continuous model, then really uh, integral does not drop to linear combinations, but also this is a uh, uh, real distributed order derivative. Uh, when phi sigma is taken to be two, tau to the power alpha and phi epsilon is just one, then again, uh, Tau must be between zero and one to satisfy thermodynamical uh, restraints. And then uh, uh, again, one can calculate a solution as this. And with uh, wave speed, uh, again, being given in this way. And uh, then, uh, uh, so we uh, would able to somehow connect wave propagation speed uh, with uh, material properties of these four cases. So for that, uh, we needed to consider a quantitative equation in its Laplace image, which is given now uh, here with this first uh, equation. So you see that this ratio is a uh, important role. So then there are two quantities, uh, creep compliance, which is actually strain in the creep experiment, uh, when stress is assumed to be heavy set function and then relaxation modulus. So these are uh, those quantities in uh, Laplace uh, image. When we consider those two quantities uh, now in uh, original image, uh, one can uh, see that uh, we obtain uh, two new uh, quantities, glass compliance and glass modulus. Uh, which are uh, here constants, which we have in assumption A5. And uh, the wave speed in uh, our model uh, is connected to those physically meaningful uh, quantities, which, uh, and it says that uh, uh, our C from, uh, from mathematical uh, investigation is actually uh, square root of GG or one over a square root of JG. And then uh, one can uh, uh, discuss this in a following way. So if GG is finite, the uh, other G non zero, then uh, we can determine the wave speed as a C, but when the other G is zero, then uh, wave speed is undetermined. And it is, uh, how they say, in, infinite. And then uh, for our case, uh, we, for our four type uh, of viscoelasticity, we can see that uh, all four cases display, di display different material properties in this uh, keep and stress uh, relaxation experiments, and that each of these corresponds to a specific type of viscoelastic material. So in case one and three, uh, we will have a uh, wave propagation speed uh, given with this formula. So ratio between uh, Bn and An, those are coefficients in, the, in our equation, while uh, case two and case four, we will have an infinite wave speed. And then there is one more uh, uh, notion called equilibrium compliance, uh, which uh, is given with this limit here, which uh, if it is a finite, we can uh, say that uh, our model uh, uh, describes solid-like materials. While uh, and uh, that is the case uh, one and case two in our let's say uh, our cases, and uh, if it is infinite, then uh, uh, it, it is infinite for uh, fluid-like materials. So uh, I see I did uh, my time. Uh, so this uh, I will just say that so then a C1 is a solid like finite, uh, uh, solid like, uh, and has the finite phase speed. So this is fractional center. Modified center model is solid like with infinite speed. Modified Maxwell model is fluid like with finite speed. Maxwell model is fluid like with infinite speed. And uh, just as a conclusion, if we have uh, our A1 to A6 to call, then this uh, equation has a new solution. And what would be very interesting for further research uh, is actually to give characterization for phi's, which appears in the constitutive equation, in order to have that big phi's now satisfy condition from A1 to A6. So, what is this uh, to be assumed uh, on this? So, what one uh, uh, assume is actually that the, uh, it would be the same uh, 
as uh, restrictions uh, which one uh, should put on uh, these functions in order to so the constitutive equation is now thermodynamically consistent, which is also not uh, yet done. And then uh, one should compare these uh, with uh, conditions uh, A1 to A6. So it is known, for example, the case of uh, Tenor and other cases from uh, one to four, uh, these uh, conditions are set. And this is the end, and I am very happy for your attention. Okay, so let us thank uh, Lubica. <laughs> let us check, do we have some questions in chat? Mm, no. no. No, at this moment, uh, Professor Pilipovic has, uh, maybe you uh, can. Again, we just yeah. exactly what we have, uh, because of this point. So my first question or remark is, if you take and you put on many slides, a real part of S is greater than zero. Then that example here. Then rise to go left on the left half of space later. This is one of them. And second one, if you claim that support is in some cone or out of that cone, actually you must prove this concretely, taking a test function supported in that place and show that this is zero. So this just does, does not follow from the integration. This is just uh, so, so somehow uh, uh, you did this analogy with the with the classical uh, case, but uh, for the proof of of the support, you one has to do this completely as by the definition of, of the waveform of the of the support. So uh, I I hope you will take care about this in your work. Just remarks, Fatima. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let us thank Lubica again. And, and now, uh, as a final uh, talk of this morning session, uh, will be broadcasted from here, from Novi Sad, and uh, this will be given by Marko Janen, and I think that he will now join. Uh, I will talk about uh, the joint work with uh, my colleagues, Professor Kalikovic and Professor Tarasovic, uh, and uh, the, the the work is uh, the paper is it's about a paper uh, uh, which deals with infinitesimal criteria in order theorem for fractional variational problems of uh, Herkov type. So, uh, Variational principles of Hamilton type are suited for conservation systems, actually, the systems in which only potential forces are active. But for those systems with not in, uh, conservative forces, the uh, ratio principles of the Hamilton type are relatively rare. And uh, then the Kerbos, the variation of principles, which we call uh, uh, here uh, KVP, uh, formulated uh, in previous works, of course, has uh, an important advantage and it could be formulated for a non conservative dynamical system. This property uh, Mainly lead to another uh, type theorems and uh, the systematic procedures for finding the first integrals actual conservation laws of the uh, non conservative dynamical systems. Uh, in this presentation, uh, we investigate uh, a particular uh, uh, Herbert's variation principle in a uh, special case when uh, it's Lagrangian in most real as well as complex order fractional derivatives. And uh, we formulate uh, the action of uh, local one parameter group of transformations related to the corresponding uh, or other branch equations of, of, the, of, of that principle, um, obtaining infinitesimal criteria for it, and also prove that we prove that uh, those are 
uh, imputation of criteria uh, and also prove the another type theorems. Uh, theorem and uh, also uh, formulate the uh, and, and actually with that uh, formulate the corresponding conservation law. Moreover, uh, using, we use the expansion of fractional derivative of, of, uh, of some particular uh, function satisfying some uh, appropriate uh, constraints into series of uh, uh, derivatives of those functions, uh, classical derivatives of those functions, and uh, um, actually analyze the approximation of already established alert, uh, uh, Lagrange equation uh, in Pitesma criteria in order to determine in this sense. Uh, between the two of variables corresponding to the topological spaces that we invoke in order to, uh, to do so. So, uh, first, some notations uh, that is used, uh, we uh, use the definition of uh, left and right Riemann Louisville fraction derivatives uh, uh, of order, uh, real order alpha uh, between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, and those are for Absolutely continuous functions bounded, of course, and uh, given by those uh, by that uh, uh, definitions, and those are uh, as uh, the uh, basically uh, integration the power four formula holds for absolutely continuous functions. Uh, then those are uh, uh, actually uh, uh, adjoint uh, for each other. Uh, also, we. Uh, Use the extension of those uh, definitions on a complex plane. We use the uh, uh, complex number up, uh, uh, where we have the uh, real parties uh, between uh, zero and one. And uh, but uh, we use uh, that extension, but uh, we use uh, another type of type of uh, fractional complex derivative uh, of uh, derivative complex order because if you apply that uh, definition, you can for real function uh, by acting of that operator obtain. Uh, 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 the, the function of uh, complex uh, valid function, and uh, in order to obtain, uh, to be sure that we uh, obtain a real value function, we use that uh, symmetry definition uh, uh, of uh, uh, Riemann Newell derivative with the complex uh, of complex order, and we use that uh, addition uh, with the conjugated uh, derivative here, here and. Uh, so that we uh, have that, uh, uh, act, the action of that operator and that operator uh, is, uh, on a real value function is also a real value function. And one can prove that also uh, the derivation by part formula uh, for absolute continuous function holds, and of course, if real value is between uh, 0 and 1. So that uh, we, extend, we use that extensively uh, in the paper. And so that uh, those are uh, adjoined to each other. Next, uh, we formulate the Herbert's variation principle. Uh, we have uh, the space of, uh, admissible, uh, not space, the set of, because it's not, it's not a space, but set of uh, admissible functions, set of uh, admissible functions, uh, those functions that are uh, from C1 on, on, on interval AP, uh, where we have that. Uh, Initial condition that is uh, satisfied, uh, and uh, we have a formula. Uh, uh, we have that uh, uh, we consider the following first order equation uh, for a real uh, function set uh, that is satisfied this uh, initial condition. Uh, that is uh, that differential equation is here for t uh, belonging to a t, uh, and we. Uh, of, of course, uh, that gamma here is a complex number, and th this is a complex, uh, symmetrized complex uh, Riemann-Liouville derivative, uh, where we have that the real part of that uh, uh, complex uh, order is between the zero and one, and uh, the problem is to find uh, is to find uh, uh, the uh, actually uh, the uh, the the minimizer uh, so. Uh, first, uh, we use those conditions. The, the Lagrangian L is obviously continuous over P. This is maybe a mistake. Uh, for every vector here, it must be uh, absolutely continuous uh, with respect to uh, 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 time. And uh, those those functions, uh, uh, that partial error with, with respect to time is from L1 for all the, those values. Uh, and uh, it also holds for uh, that uh, term, and that term 
this is of course the uh, right uh, fractional derivative of order real order alpha and the complex order gamma. Uh, those must be uh, L1 functions. And we define uh, that uh, term uh, lambda, uh, which is uh, exponential, exponential partial of that integral, uh, where uh, those denote the differential partial derivatives, uh, uh, basic partial derivatives. Uh, 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 for example, these files for that uh, uh, fit uh, uh, argument. And uh, so that uh, uh, the problem, the calculation of equation problem is to find the, the uh, basically the, the function u which uh, uh, belong to that uh, uh, admissible state, uh, admissible set, uh, so that uh, the uh, previous equation here is satisfied, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, set uh, take its extreme value at the point t. Uh, and that is the calculus of integration principle. Uh, of course, in a special case when uh, we do, uh, do not have that uh, uh, L is uh, actually uh, will, uh, dependent on that, and we, and we have, uh, if you integrate uh, this equation, we basically uh, obtain uh, Hamiltonian principle. So it is a, a, a more general principle than Hamiltonian principle. Uh, now uh, we recall uh, uh, the following result uh, uh, that uh, some uh, u star from the admissible set u such that uh, uh, set t uh, takes the extreme value uh, set of, uh, big t at big t and where of course set uh, solved uh, the, the, the previous equation uh, uh, then uh, this is uh, basically uh, then you start with the following generalized uh, Lagrange equation given here, the lambda is defined previously, uh, uh, and it is given here. Uh, so this, this is basically uh, 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 so if uh, uh, you uh, if you uh, take the thermal value at uh, set of p, then this is satisfied. Uh, and uh, we use that, uh, so that is Euler Lagrange equation for the calculus of variation principle, uh, which is given previously. Uh, so it is necessary condition that, uh, that, that, that that's the, the case. And uh, now we define a, a local group of symmetries for the calculus of variation, variation principle. Uh, basically, it's a, transform it's a transformation uh, where we uh, transform. Uh, uh, where we have a one parameter group uh, that uh, acts on manifold uh, of uh, P and U, uh, and uh, the, the transformation and that uh, that uh, that action is given by that transformation. Uh, this is the parameter uh, of the group, and uh, we have it uh, at uh, equal to zero that uh, uh, this P is equal to T and this C is equal to U. Uh, and in infinitesimal generators are given here uh, if uh, those functions are smooth enough and we can uh, proceed with the Taylor expansion, we can uh, uh, we can have this here. And uh, also uh, we assume uh, for some uh, later approximations that those those two uh, basically uh, 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 elements of uh, the of uh, uh, of uh, that, that in infinitesimal generator uh, uh, tau and eta uh, and c that the, those are uh, c1 functions and that moreover that the, those are analytic functions. So uh, we have uh, here definitions of uh, asynchronous variations uh, for uh, t. Uh, uh, u that, that is derivative with respect to uh, eta, some plateau derivative, and uh, uh, see, uh, that synchron variation when, where we have uh, that uh, t is not transformed, only uh, u is transformed, and uh, uh, those relations can be easily uh, uh, checked that uh, asynchron variation of uh, t is equal to tau. Uh, uh, and that 
acid fluorescence of U is equal to C, and that that uh, uh, relation between acid and acid fluorescence uh, of U holds. So we can obtain this. And also, uh, if we uh, take a dot operator um, uh, directly with respect to time, uh, that operator commute with the uh, uh, information, but does not commute with acid, uh, though we have this relation here, and it is used uh, in uh, uh, later proofs. Uh, okay, I'll skip this. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, this relation here holds because uh, in uh, when we transform time, in uh, uh, general case, uh, also this uh, 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 lower bound is transformed, not just the, the the, this uh, uh, term here, but also this term here. So uh, we also have that this holds, but we have in, in addition uh, go to this partial derivative, derivative with respect to A uh, uh, that is also transformed. That uh, this uh, remind uh, this additional term must be added, and it can be shown that uh, it is equal to that term. So. Uh, and uh, one, one can uh, see that uh, if this is equal to zero, tau uh, uh, a the, uh, and the u uh, of a is equal to zero, then uh, the whole term is equal to zero, and then we have only uh, uh, that uh, relation, and, uh, and that term is equal to zero. So uh, if we so the uh, uh, when we, we, we say that uh, uh, that uh, symmetry group uh, acts uh, on that manner T U, uh, of course uh, it is also connected to the uh, whole uh, approximate uh, whole minimization problem. So every element of the group transform U be injected into some U uh, hat uh, consisting of a single real functions defined on on uh, that interval which is also transformed with the same initial value u one and some uh, u zero and some function u cat of c uh, cat from the uh, transform space satisfying basically the, the, the same the same equation in the transformation domain is the solution to the relation problem if uh, if external value is equal to external value of the not transformed function where that holds a. So uh, it follows that uh, uh, necessary condition for that, for that is that for any sub interval here, we have that uh, acid conversion of z is equal to zero. And it implies that uh, the, 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 the necessary condition that basically uh, transform z of t uh, transform is equal to z of t uh, for every t from that interval, which is uh, used. Later. And uh, now we give the uh, theory that uh, expressed the infinitism of criteria for the Hertz uh, principle of containing the uh, uh, real as well as uh, complex order derivatives. So it is given with that, uh, that uh, relation here. So that uh, must be uh, uh, zero for all two. And given the uh, uh, tau and c. Uh, Infinitism or generators of a symmetry group uh, acting uh, that we uh, want to show is it uh, is it the symmetry group uh, of that uh, principle? So uh, we prove it uh, by uh, showing that. Okay, okay, okay. We, we uh, just to say that uh, the, the the part of the proof is to, to show that that uh, acid formation of that is equal to zero, and that is basically. Uh, uh, sufficient for that. Uh, now uh, uh, we can re remark when uh, those uh, when alpha tend to uh, one and uh, gamma and L does not uh, uh, depend on uh, uh, complex derivative, then we have uh, that uh, uh, expression, that relation, uh, which is the criterion criteria. And uh, okay, now we. Uh, Next, uh, develop uh, another uh, theorem for that uh, <coughs> problem. Suppose that uh, tau and c define a symmetry group for the characterization of problems with complex uh, derivatives, partial then the, the other equation 
an I, which is given previously, as the first thing you know, or given here, uh, uh, meaning that this is a conservation law for that uh, problem. Uh, this is derived uh, starting from the criteria criteria by uh, taking uh, by noting that uh, uh, this holds so that uh, we have uh, the, uh, that uh, the first term can be expressed as a total direction of that uh, 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 expression, and then basically the rest is uh, 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 direct respect to of some newly moved integral and of course as uh, the, the direct respect to is, is zero, uh, zero we uh, conclude that uh, the, the expression must be constant uh, of course all uh, uh, assumptions on that uh, finals of the functions uh, the, 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 those are uh, differential and, and continuous is, is uh, taken care of. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, here we uh, additionally replace this term here uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with that term because it follows from the lower uh, equation for that principle, which must be satisfied uh, for you, and uh, then follow the, the previously, uh, then follow the previously, uh, the previous expression. So, that is the uh, conservation law for the uh, 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 have expression principle of complex order directors. Uh, and now we would say something uh, about approximations. Uh, we formulate the procedure that generates uh, uh, an approximation with that the principle uh, it utilizes classical uh, integer order directors of some order n of this, and we use it to approximations of the Riemann Miller fraction directors by finding some subdirectors of integer order, but then we it is known that it converges uh, uh, uniformly on uh, the, the, the series converges uniformly on uh, compact intervals and uh, we de uh, derive in criteria as well as, well as the conservation laws approximately uh, and prove the convergence of that conservation laws to the in this sense in some dual uh, pairing uh, system to the uh, as n and to infinity. Uh, of course, for the sake, the sake of simplicity, we need to see just the case when uh, L depends on uh, the real derivative because uh, generalization in, is then trivial for that uh, case when it, it depends on complex fra or the fractional derivative that we invoke. And uh, of course, uh, this is the expansion that we use. This is the series that converges to that uh, fractional derivative. If, uh, F is relative function on some uh, CD uh, interval, open it, interval, and alternate between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, and this is moving new, new from convergence on uh, closed sub intervals, uh, uh, compact sub intervals, and we uh, further assume those con conditions. Basically, the L is sufficiently smooth, and uh, this is uh, the Q is analytic in CD. Unfortunately, this is a very strong condition. so. Maybe in the future we will uh, try to, 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 to weaken that condition because there, there are not, not uh, many uh, real problems that satisfy that you can satisfy that. But uh, for now, it's, uh, we, we use that assumption. And of course, we have an approximate problem uh, which uh, contains uh, integer order directors, uh, and that Ln is obtained here by replacing the uh, approximation of the uh, 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 but replacing uh, a fraction variable real order alpha with the, its approximation and uh, we can observe that this holds uh, where this partial variable is actually partial variables of L uh, but evaluated at that approximation uh, and uh, here 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 uh, it, 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 it holds for, for that and then, uh, okay, we, we now invoke some uh, uh, topological vector space that we use. Uh, it's a space of analytic function uh, on intro CD uh, with that uh, time of the norms, uh, but it's a fashion space. And, uh, but we use only, uh, as element of dual, uh, we use only uh, the functions that are uh, continuous on AT uh, and uh, zero uh, of 
uh, on uh, CD deepens that interval. Uh, as uh, well, we, we uh, use only that uh, to draw because it is sufficient, sufficient to us because we uh, uh, use the conditions that uh, allow that. So uh, uh, the uh, every function f, which is continuous and uh, extended uh, by zero here, defines an element of the part of the uh, of that uh, space function by that uh, action of that integral. So uh, now we use the proposition that uh, those some that, that we have that convergence in the big sense for a, 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 right, a right fractional derivative, uh, and then uh, use uh, the other kind of equation which is derived for the approximate problem. We can. Uh, uh, we, uh, it is stated in this form and also in this form. And uh, we can uh, we, uh, at what, uh, we uh, uh, prove the convergence of that uh, approximate uh, other dimension equation to the original equation and then uh, convergence of the, the whole of the uh, conservation approximate conservation law to the conservation law in the big sense in that uh, dual parity. And uh, because time is up. <laughs> That's it. Uh, uh, here, thank you for your attention. <laughs> ah, okay. So, as we see, Marco could uh, tell us uh, much more. But let us see. Do we have uh, some uh, questions? No. No. Uh, do we have some questions from the audience up here? No, so we will thank the speaker and all the speakers of this morning sessions. Thank you again. And, uh, before we reassume at uh, 